but... No. So, should I start? No. You asked me uh, what was the basic point of what you said. Uh, the basic point that I made was for ICT to be an enabler, there are preconditions, extremely important and necessary preconditions. There must be an infrastructure, there must be a governance system that actually can sustain this infrastructure. Uh, if these don't exist, if these two conditions don't exist, then IC yeah. ICT's uh, enabling function will be disrupted in one way or the other. And uh, ICT itself is an enabler. I mean, you can use ICT to try to see if governance could be, be e-governance, for example. And some of these distortions could be could be uh, repaired in some way. You could use them, but on the other hand, uh, to assume that ICT could be enabling in the African context without these preconditions and, and an understanding of what is not working in Africa now will be uh, will be misdirected. And that's basically the point I made. And that the question of innovation, when it comes to innovation, I talked about. Co-evolution. By co-evolution, I mean we can have top-end evolution, uh, uh, innovation and invention, but you must also have uh, low-hanging fruit type innovation, where broad-based innovation, where the actual innovation is in exists in the communities, with no as knowledge, uh, and there must be a way again of incentivizing the governments, the universities, and others to try to understand what people have and help them and the private sector too, help them to translate that into innovation, from their knowledge to innovation. And that is uh, a task that has not been done. Again, various institutions don't work like that. Whereas majority of the people live in the rural areas and, and, uh, and their health, their education, the, the water, the sanitation, all the needs they, they have, their well-being is very important. And that we need to introduce ICT to make sure that these are you know, like every laptop in every school in the, in the rural areas. All these things must happen. But to be able to happen, you need to have policy, uh, understanding and directing this. That you don't have in many African countries. And that's the problem we have altogether. And that's what I talked about. How do we go to a broad-based innovation? Openness means open yourself to the community and create something called the community system of innovation as a logo, as a brand, so that you can dramatize the issue, so that you actually address the, re the real problems of the people and the, and the needs of the people in the communities and their well-being and so on. That's what I also stressed. And I think in broadly we, we agree with, uh, with Richard, broadly, in, in, uh, but he stresses, to my mind, uh, he he, although he understands uh, the specific context matters, the actual context in Africa, the fact that we don't have infrastructure, that we don't have functioning governments, and we have lots of problems like that, which actually can complicate uh, the use and application of ICT as an enabling uh, uh, power, is, 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 is missing. The other important thing I said was that wealth in itself could be uh, a burden. It may not be a, a good thing. You need productive power. By productive power, I mean you need the power to produce wealth. Is the skills, the human capital, the mental capital. All these things are the genius capital. Are extremely important in a society to cultivate, to develop, them, so that you actually can change your natural resource into into productive. Power, uh, so that it can be the wealth could be more built on a solid infrastructure uh, based on knowledge that maintains it, and reproduces, and sustains it. And that's what uh, I also talked about. I think these are some of the key points I made.